Easily the funniest movie I've seen this year is Wannabe. It's a comedy about a former British boy band member who moves to L.A. trying to make it big in the movies. Today, director Richard Keith and actor Craig Young are here. Great to have you guys here today. It's Thank great you. to be here. I have a t pretty twisted sense of humor, so I don't know if it's good or bad that this movie really clicked with me. But, uh, but you're British, so I guess it's the whole British sense of humor thing. Yes. Uh if we have one. Dry wit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But besides being the lead actor in this, um, you're also the co-writer. Yes. And apparently this is based a bit on your life because we have here in our presence a former British boy band member. Well, semi-true. I was in. Semi-true. Uh, I was oh. in. Um, there were. We had two girls in our band too. So it was. Oh, like, or, we were the okay. ABBA of the nineties. Ah, but not quite. So it was obviously. a teen band. Okay, it was a teen a, a band. Teen yeah, band. but a we did all ABBA. the boy band moves. So okay. I guess you know that was. I think you can um, look at, in the encyclopedia under boy band, and it would say singing and dancing act. Yeah. And, and what was so, it called? It was. Uh, it was called Deuce. Deuce. Yeah. Okay. Play on words. Yeah. Four members: two girls, two boys. Ah. You know, they've got that new ABBA group to take off with, uh, I think they're doing that again. Oh, the somebody, 18s. Is yeah. that what it is? 18s? Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Well, they even have like, you know, what, it's like one set is like the blonde girl the, and you, and then it's like the dark <laughs> girl. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like the, the blonde girl, oh, and then you, the, the blonde, blonde guy, boy. and then yeah. like the dark haired guy and the dark haired girl. And, yeah. and you do that in your band too? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. okay. No, no, so that was his band. Oh, okay. No, I thought band. you meant the 18s, but you mean the early No, I haven't seen that. I don't know what they that is. They so. <laughs> copied us. Copy, yeah, we yeah, copied exactly. ABBA. <laughs> they, they were big in Denmark, so, you know. Well. Big in Denmark. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm a big ABBA fan, so I, what can I say? But, yeah. uh. Knowing me, knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this, this won't be the show about Abba, I promise. <laughs> but, uh, and indeed, you were here in L.A., though, um, following your acting career as well, as yes. the character does in the movie. Exactly. And, um, and so we kind of took little nuances and, and things, the unbelievable stories that were happening to me on my journey of transitioning from boy band memberhood to um, actor. Uh -huh. um, here in Los Angeles, <laughs> but taking there it to the extreme, some, yeah, you know. So uh, was it though? I don't know. I mean, some of well, it I thought was right on the mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, actually, a lot of it's really very true. I mean, not just you know. I mean, m most of it's based on his own experiences, but of course we took him and blew him out of proportion yep. uh, for you know cinematic effect and for also for the humor. But uh, well, for instance, I love the part about the casting director you had where. She wouldn't touch anybody. That's true. And yeah, I've read a book. I had a casting director in the show, and she said that I think. It, well, actually, I don't want to s uh, slander the wrong casting director, but a cast. Anyway, I know that's true. That there are casting directors who will not touch the people because they think they'll get germs. Per I just want to say, I think that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, in the business weird. world, people go into business meetings all the time, and you shake their hand. But casting directors, like, oh my god, I can't touch you. Yeah. I just yeah. think that's kind of weird. Yeah. It's like saying that all <laughs> actors are, are disease-ridden. You know what I mean? And, and you I can't. I mean, it's like little kids in, in elementary school or kindergarten. You know, and every you know, sure they take it home and the parents get it too. But you know, but you have to be exposed to like germs and illness, and you're not going to die because you shake somebody's hand. Yeah. So anyway, so that is kind of one of the weirder things, you know, like the Hollywood, Hollywood kind of thing. Definitely. And, and you kind of um, have a few things in there, which again, although it goes beyond just Hollywood. You know? I think so. I mean, I think we tried to keep the story grounded as much as possible in sort of the reality of, you know, even like a domestic situation. You know, you have this the the house guest who won't leave, and uh -huh. you know, of course, he comes into the house and he's like, you know, he takes over he takes over Craig's character's life. You know, it's like suddenly he's with his ex girlfriend, and suddenly he's getting the the ex manager, and everybody loves him, and nobody <laughs> nobody loves Steve's right, you know character, how. and it's you know, anybody anybody who's ever you know, had a roommate that they just wanted to like put their hands around oh, and strangled never, it. Oh, never, never. Of course. <laughs> well, so. definitely one of my favorite parts of the movie was the, the casting audition, or the, I guess the audition that didn't happen uh, with the security guard. And I think yeah. we've got a clip of that. We're going to take a look at that. <laughs> How long will it take? Like two minutes. It's, it's like two minutes, that's all. Ivy Blend coffee. The coffee that Americas love. Could you do it one more time? Ivy Blend Coffee, the coffee America loves. Are you smiling? I, I, I need to feel warmth. I need to feel the love. Ivy Blend? Right. See that big smile? Yeah. <laughs> right. America likes. There we go. Ivy Blend Coffee, the coffee America loves. Hold it. You Let's like do it, it one more time. All right. But See, cause I can imagine it. it's Sunday morning. And what I want is Ivy Blend coffee. Okay. Okay? Oh, so you want me to sell it to you? <laughs> right. 
now we're here. Okay, cool. We were over here before, but now we're here. Excellent. That's right, what right. we need to be. Okay, I love that. Even the security guard there is giving the directions. Because in the beginning, you know, he doesn't want to, he's like, oh, you're late. He's late. Don't yeah. bother yeah. me. Yeah. And then in the end, he becomes the, the prima donna director. Exactly. No offense. Who, uh... Well, you know, <laughs> we all have those moments. So. But I also, but I've taken voiceover classes, or I took one, and I know, I've heard people say that about the smile in your voice, so I had to laugh when I heard that. Yeah. Because, um, in fact, I think you do voiceovers too, don't you? I do, yeah. Because okay. uh, I think of... we almost lost you today because of a voiceover. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Uh, for so. a, um, a video game called, uh, based on the movie Aragon, mm. which is coming out based on the novel, so, yeah, it was fun. It was good. So. And uh, but so do you put smile in it? Is that what you're doing? When well, you're actually, I had a lot of death scenes oh, today, so oh. it's all like yeah, video game, of course, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Screaming those sounds and, uh, and stuff like that. So I'm surprised I have any voice left today, but yeah, um, it's it's good. It's it's good fun. Uh, quick okay. in and out. In that scene, in that particular scene, Craig was uh, had flu that day when we oh. shot. And he was like, yeah, I mean, he literally almost couldn't move. And we brought, I mean, we shot that scene in about 45 minutes, I think. Wow. I mean, we just like banged it out as quick as we possibly could. And, and the security guard didn't want to shake my hand. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. because Naturally. I had flu. <laughs> was he a real security guard? No, no, no. no. He, he, but he, I like I liked the way he played that, though. And I, again, I've seen that kind of with assistants, too, sometimes, you know, or in yeah. offices like that, where they're in the, you know, around the business. And so then they kind of take on some of the let's say, attitude of the professional staff. That, uh... yes. Well, yeah, one of the threads we wanted to have going through the entire piece was that, uh, you know, everybody and everybody ha either has a script, oh, everybody yeah. wants to be a director, everybody has a book to sell, or something, you know, whether it's the valet, whether it's the security guard, whether it's this, whether it's that, it's L.A., it's just the way it is. So. The thing that I thought was interesting about this, too, was just kind of the look of the film, because you do it as sort of a, a fake documentary yeah. or a mockumentary parody, whatever you want to call it. But it, so it's almost... Uh, not quite a reality TV show, but again, but like a real, uh, a documentary where right. you're fly on the wall almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it has more of a video look you went for, you know, which makes sense for doing a documentary. Well, I mean, it, it made sense for a couple of different reasons. I mean, first of all, it cut the it cut the expense from having to buy film and yeah. you know carry around a much larger camera, which is a lot more difficult to do. Yeah. And then second, yeah, I, I wondered if 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 from a budget or production point of view, you know, if I thought, well, I wonder if that's accidental or intentional because, you know, started, I, I you know, knew that it would. It started that way, yeah. I mean, it started as kind of a budgetary concern, but it was also, you know, I mean, it was a concern that we had going into scripting. I mean, we had a producer come on board who mm -hmm. said, you know, I think you should do this, as, because we had, a, uh, it wasn't a mockumentary at first. Right. Uh, he said, you know, I think you should try doing this as sort of like a, a guest style mockumentary, you know, like a follow them around and, yeah. you know, see what's yeah, going on. Yeah, I think on. it works better that way. Yeah, because and, you know, it adds to Use a medium to your advantage. Yeah, exactly, instead of. Yeah, you really did, because, I mean, it didn't become, and I guess I'm just saying this for people, you know, who might be interested to make their own film, although, as you said, there are too many of those out there. Yeah. But, um, but you used it to your advantage, or used it in a way where it really made sense in the context. Yeah to the film and I think of something like Jackass whatever you may think of that better or worse I just saw the trailer the other night for that and on the same thing I'm sure they had plenty of budget if they wanted to shoot that on film but it looked like it was very digital or, or you know TV style right. which was intent you know for that kind of a product or it's you know, that's I think also with Jackass is that they um, you know all those extreme uh, events that they're doing it, the camera's got to move out of the way as fast as it can and yeah I'm sure know, just the logistics if you're, if you're and everything, working with yeah. actual film it's so heavy that sure and you have to set up and there's lights and there's I mean it's just a, a whole longer production process that has to happen I'm sure so so but you found it easier though to shoot on video than than the whole I mean it was just it was easier for me logistically because I mean the setup was you know I mean available light I mean sometimes we'd add a little bit here or there mm. at night I'd shoot with a with a light on top of the camera really? in, in really dark places so we didn't have that sort of, I mean, the worst shots you'll ever see on camera are at night because it makes it, the pixelation really comes out. So you just turn on the lights and you look fine. But, but I think the thing is people these days are so used to the home shot video and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you see it on the evening news and things. We're just so used to... It it's, adds credibility in a sense. Yeah, it, 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 it makes, makes it real. real. It's yeah. weird because you would think it would detract, but it actually makes it seem more real. Yeah, the than, shake uh, of the camera. Yeah, it's, it's, sure. It's like an effect of seeing seeing like the cops type footage where yeah, you're yeah. running behind the bad guy and, and, and you know, that's that's adds to, you know, the reality of the whole thing. So We will be right back with Richard Keith and Craig Young. We were back with Richard Keith and Craig Young today talking about the movie Wannabe. So the other thing I noticed about this movie, though, um, again, because it had a documentary type real like, reality TV kind of feel, follow them around, um, how much of this was scripted and how much was ad-libbed? I mean, I know you're listed as a writer, but... 
Um, we started with a full-on script. I mean, mm. it was about a 90-page script. Okay. It went through various different forms, and we we wrote, we rewrote uh -huh. dozens of times. And then we we took the script, and we just felt like we needed like a little little extra punch to it. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of Curb Enthusiasm and shows like that. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do is we we gathered up some of our acting friends, especially in this mm -hmm. one acting class, which Adam Haas, who also plays in it, and, and uh, Anna Becker were in. And we had them do what we call workshopping the script, where we mm. just have them loosely do the scenes based on the lines, but we wouldn't stick to any specific lines. Yeah, keep it in the you know the real tongue, so it had that reality flavor to it. So you you kind of told them well, they had the idea of what you wanted to cover in the scene or yeah. how to do. Well, we call it like a beat sheet, like um, mm -hmm. in this scene, like the security guard scene, for example. Like he comes in, he's, he's desperate to get in this audition, whatever he's got to do, uh -huh. and he'll do anything to get him in, and then give Jonathan the direction that Jonathan, you're going to do anything you can to stop him. Wow. You know, and, and so he came up with that out on the fly at the top of his well, head? Well, that particular stuff? scene didn't exist in, in that sentence. It was like two sentences. And I, I, I was, when I was there, I remember mm. uh, the night before I'd watched Curb, and I was like, I think we can play with this, you know, like have like, you know how in Curb like there's constantly arguments happening. I've actually never seen it. I've heard oh. about that show. I've never seen it. Well, anyway, <laughs> it's lots of arguing, and I was like, you know, let's make this into a fight, you know, and uh, so that that scene just expanded out. That's one of the exception scenes in that sense, because most of the time uh, we had like very specific ideas on where we wanted to go with a scene and you know a problem with improv is it tends to ramble on. And right, like, yeah that's the thing, I mean it, it seemed conversational or real kind of like you did just pull the camera out but yet it wasn't unfocused or just kind of right. all over the place. You could tell that, I mean again not in a bad way but it seemed like a movie, or you know that there was some kind of structure there carrying it along and not just you know which is one reason I've never been a big fan of reality TV shows. Sometimes I think, you know, the whole idea that you just stick a camera in the room and whatever happens, you know, and then maybe you can get something decent out of it. Yeah. Whereas... But even those are know, heavily scripted. I mean, uh, they, and they heavily don't... heavily edited, too, exactly. by the way, yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. I, th I think that... Uh, I mean, for I think that with, when you're dealing with improv, you have to have somewhere to go. Yep. If you don't, it's like it's like grabbing a tiger by the tail. You know, it just takes you wherever it goes. If you don't know where you're going to go, then that means it's going to take you where it wants to go. So, and you know, you'll well, each see. Scene will have an arc, so you yeah, have a beginning, you know, middle, and end. Yeah, and, exactly. And the journey no. has to happen. So, if you just keep it focused with with the actors uh, and, and give them those beats, then they know exactly where they need to go and where the scene needs to end up to change in order for the next scene to work. Well, the comedy obviously definitely helped carry it. I mean, I guess you could do that with the drama or something as well, but, but the sure. comedy definitely worked. And you had some, again, I, th I just thought some classic moments in there. For instance, I love the woman who played the casting director, oh, yeah. too. Again, we were talking about not shaking the hand and stuff. Carolina White. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I had to look her up because I thought, is this woman really a casting director? Because no, I thought no. she just had the part down so well. She was on know? Laverne and Shirley for years, and uh, her father was Jesse White, who was the Maytag man. Uh, for many oh, years, yeah. and yeah, he's a very famous uh, character actor in Hollywood for a long time. And she did, and, and I think other things too, because I was looking at what it was like, um, not, um, oh, the... Falling Down she was in, I think. Yeah. She was in that briefly. Um, and he would, not Mary Tyler Moore, but it was yeah. something, or was it Mary Tyler Moore? Something I don't know, like it's some, yeah, uh, anyway, yeah, she's done quite a bit of was TV. It, and, uh, I don't know, but I know she, she was, was on acting, the... She was in acting class with me, that's where we found her. Oh, oh. Uh, we used to study with Jeffrey Tambor, the actor, and he was our teacher, and she was in there, and I was like, she's perfect. And at the time, we were looking for somebody to play it, and I'm like, I know exactly who this woman is. Yeah, so she, she came in, and, and she, we, we auditioned her first, and her, her audition was spectacular. Yeah, she One just of the knocked best. it out of the park. The best <laughs> I'm seen. And I'm sorry, I was just, while you were saying that, I was thinking, too, of the scene with um, the... The handicapped audition, oh, yeah. which <laughs> will show at the favorite. end. But it's um, scene. yeah, boy, have you gotten any response to that as far as like well, letters? Well, it's based or... on truth because I am actually partially deaf, so I oh, thought so you really that, are. So okay. that I thought that I was, you know, disabled. <laughs> so you went to that kind of an <laughs> because audition, I, you know, couldn't hear. So I actually did go to a, a casting for a, a disabled showcase, uh -huh. and this was the thing because I was down on my luck and I couldn't get arrested. So and that's the reaction you got from the other people in the yeah. room. Like the, wow. I mean, to an far. extreme. <laughs> <laughs> um, were those now? Well, were those actors actually? No, no. they were ably okay. bodied. Yeah. Okay. But when it, when he told me the story of that he'd gone to a disabled because I was still writing the script, he told me that, and I was just like, because I was asking him for anecdotes of stuff that he'd done, and I was just like, oh my god, I can't believe this. I had I went that night. I wrote that scene out, and it, I mean, it turned out to be much better uh, the way it was because all the actors kind of joined in and ganged up on him and in the original <laughs> scene it was just like the wheelchair guy who who like gets really mad and like gets you know tries to get him out of a disabled audition
and pulled out the knife. Yeah. That <laughs> one was of the tougher auditions. Though. Yeah, that's a yeah. tough one. So it but. was a great way to get out of the room and out of the scene. <laughs> yeah, it was. And of course, you had the Hollywood parties where. Um, you get uh, hit on yeah. <laughs> by anybody yeah, exactly. <laughs> and their mother <laughs> and the producers too you show that side of it yeah. um, were the producers that, that actually there. happened too like yeah. somebody invited me back to a party at their house in the Hollywood Hills and oh, really? there was actually no party going on it was a party for two. Oh, exactly. there was a party swiftly got out of there <laughs> yeah I've heard stories I guess I, th this isn't my tell-all show so I won't do it but yeah I've heard stories about behind the scenes of a well-known national TV show that um, had the you talk about the casting couch yeah. I mean this show is just like the revolving door <laughs> and what, what was kind of cool I think about uh, our movie is that it's almost like the reverse you know we heard about women for so long being part yeah. of the casting couch and this is yeah, with, the know, guy. with the guys and and that you know it's almost like a reverse that we can suffer from that aspect of Hollywood too yeah sure. what I think it's funny is it's an assistant who ends up actually trying to <laughs> instead of like a big producer or something you know it's an assistant it's a low man on yeah, the yeah, exactly it's like you can't although that part with the producers at the end though it looked like they were yeah. getting cut it for later those guys are great too so yeah we love them um, so, in addition to this movie, um, I know, well, we were talking actually beforehand, but you have a project coming with Jean-Claude Van Damme yes, called Hardcore. Yeah, called Hardcore. Um, we shot in Vancouver. It's about um, a West Coast rapper that dies and an East Coast rapper that's blamed for it. Um, are you the rapper? So you got yeah, the, I, I'm. Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear some? <laughs> well, I saw the dancing and the, the, the boy band thing, or that's sorry, the, the teen band thing. So. Yeah, I don't rap. No, no, that's not my forte. But um, I play a reporter who's following the story, a little like, um, I don't know if you ever saw Natural Born Killers and the Robert Downey Jr. character yeah. in that. Oh. I kind of play a Actually, similar, I I similar role. <laughs> it's I a good didn't. movie. You should, I've heard you a lot should rent it. it. Rather than see the hardcore. <laughs> I'm, just <kidding. laughs> I'm just kidding. It's great. I loved it. It was so much fun. We had a blast. And you have also been on Lost, yes. I believe. What did you do on Lost? Um, I play a director, funnily enough. Um, and you, like, you definitely have the whole uh, music and uh, entertainment industry angle going on with that. Well, uh, yeah, the, the great thing is is that I know directors, I know... You he know, modeled himself after, so he says anyway, he says he's... After, after you. After I me. wore glasses and everything. Yeah, and like he had my glasses, it was ridiculous. And apparently the jerk director in the movie was also based on you? No, it wasn't. <laughs> I was just kidding about that. I've, you know, I've never like blown a whistle at anybody and I try to avoid copious amounts of cocaine on set if it's possible. <laughs> yeah, so, how yeah. much of that was based on... Yeah, well, you know, none. No, not, for you, not for me. <laughs> not for me either. <laughs> Maybe they do saying, it at home. Not, no, no, no. Production. I was saying you. Well, he experienced that on a movie. He had a director. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who, that's what we based really? that also on. That, that whole movie. short film was based on an actual short yeah. film where the director was doing blow in the bathroom and and uh, the whole set was uh, unfocused. It and was a mess. It, did it improve? So I, it did it improve? They improve the film? <laughs> I don't know. I walked off the set actually. I didn't. I, yeah, I didn't even finish it. Yeah, well, welcome to Hollywood, I think. <laughs> right? yes, yeah. uh, that's why half the people end up in rehab, right? That's I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> that's another show in itself. We'll be right back with Richard Keith and Craig Young. We are back with Craig Young and Richard Keith today talking about the new movie, Wannabe. Well, let's see. As I say, despite the fact that this is a comedy, I mean, I think, you know, underneath all good comedies, there's truth and um, there is I don't want to say a little kind of a bleak side of Hollywood or you, or you have some fun with it but having been in the teen band and now breaking into acting and, and working on your first film as a director what's your what are your thoughts on Hollywood I mean how good or how bad is it I mean is it you know you have some fun with it in the movie and that's great it's material maybe sure. maybe that's all it is is it material but is it as bad as it's seems or what do you think I mean I, th I think it can be I, I just I think it depends upon how you know, you feel about it. I mean, if you take it with a pinch of salt and you have a laugh at your own downfalls and how you can behave and, you know, the situations that you run into, then, you know, I don't think it's all that bad. I mean, but then again, we're the underbelly of Hollywood with right. the movie Wannabe, you know, and we're not like... Well, you can raise the standards, right? 
Sure. Yeah, so I mean, it's like on, if if you see the movie, the TV show Entourage, you know, we're like the anti Entourage. We haven't achieved that fame, if you mm -hmm. will, and, right. and fortune. But that don't you think those guys have? And I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and again, it probably is a whole show in itself. But I think that's one reason, though, that so many people do end up in rehab or have problems. So is that you know they don't know how to handle it, or when they get there, or they freak out, or they have all these ideas. I think instead of it, taking the good part, or let's say even the artistic part, or whatever, the personal enjoyment, the satisfaction, but it has to become something else, you know, with personality and ego and I what don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, are you have offending me? <laughs> yeah, you're the one who thinks you're the best dancer. Yeah. I saw that movie. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> So was that, by the way, based on a true incident with the, you and the other guy who were um, having it out over the best dancer thing? The, the oh, no, no, we totally made that up. Yeah, we made so, that up. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. You, it's probably that way in the boy bands, don't you think? They're probably I, well, I think so. there's rivalry so. in, in anything, you know, and I think that there was definitely, you know, there was a guy that was in an actual boy band that did come out to Los Angeles and, you know, he used to be so smarmy about his success, even though he had no success, and you know, thought that it was a piece of cake. And I'd been out here for like three years, struggling my ass off. Mm -hmm. And and he literally, you know, came and was like, "Oh yeah, I was doing a read, a reading with Orlando Bloom the other day." And I'm like, "Shut up!" You know, like, <laughs> how dare you? You know what I mean? And it's like, right. and so it's like that. You know, you can't. It's just. You know, it's, this town does sometimes get like that, definitely. Yeah, a little bit, but I mean, I think, you, I think you always have to, you know, take your, your successes and your failures. And, you know, you have to, like, say, I've done these things. And we, we always look at our goals, what we've accomplished, and look back and say, you know what, we got this movie done. We got sure. into festivals. We got an award right. out of it. You know, we've done well. Well, that's the good thing these days. I think the positive side, maybe some of the, let's say, I don't know, negativity or the despair of old Hollywood, that, you know, these days you actually can make your own movie. Um, or TV show or something and get it out there in a way that, you know, a long time, well, not that long ago, actually, would have been a lot more difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so. the high, it's democracy in action, but at the same time, it sort of floods the market with, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, chaff to separate from the, yeah. you know, it's you have to really look for the good right. stuff, you know. As right. I say, anybody can make a movie, but should they? Yeah, you know, yeah. now it used to be like a stack of scripts, now it's a stack of movies, because, you know, you can make a movie on a mini DV camcorder for nothing, so. Like they say, anybody can play basketball, but it doesn't mean you're Michael Jordan. Exactly. So I'm just curious, since we're talking about this whole Hollywood thing, since you're from England and I admire the British very rational, no nonsense and all this, what's your take on Hollywood? Is, is everybody as crazy as they think? Or, they, or what, as a, you know, a foreigner coming to America, what do you think about the people in this town and the business? Um, I mean, I was the opposite. I was infatuated with Hollywood, you know, like living in England. I'm, I'm living in a coal mining town and, you know, seeing all the big movies and, and dreaming of, of moving here one day and, and yeah, when I when I got here, of, of course, you know, it's just the, the guy off the plane and it's a big, wide wonder. Um, but yeah, there are definitely crazy people here, <laughs> but there are crazy people in England too. You know, sure. they just have a different accent here. <laughs> well, we're gonna take a look at a crazy little audition scene here as we close. Thank you both very much for being here today, yeah. Richard Good Keith. Meeting and him. Sorry, don't shake hands. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you for that. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time. We'll take a look at a clip here from Wannabe. I'm deaf. Oh, yeah. Deaf in one ear. Which ear? This one. Oh. Do you really think you qualify? I mean, if you want to yeah. look around, we're disabled. You're kind of, you're kind of cheating the system a little. What, agent are, you, what agent are you with? A lot mm -hmm. of us are with Epstein Barr. They're the, the, uh, the disabled, disabled agency, the big one here. In the, I've never seen you at the Christmas parties. I don't have an agent right now. Oh, well, that's a disability in itself. You should probably get up and go. I'll just take your name off the list. No, I actually. Thank you. One second, please. What's that? I was. I, I'm registered disabled right, with right. with the Screen Actors Guild. Right. Have you been deaf since birth? No, I, I was in a band. Oh, oh no. Oh, well, no. Come God. On. Not only are you not deaf from birth, you're blonde and you're white. Please, if there's the door, what's your hurry? What do you think? You don't have any That's why you're voted off the island. Yeah, you should probably get up.